Hey everybody, we're gonna correct more story problems. Yay! This is page 163 and 164. This is gonna lead right into an assignment that you were given today. There's a Google form titled, Write Your Own Story Problems. You should write your own story problems. This document that you're looking at right now, Guidelines for Writing Story Problems, is attached to the assignment post. You should check it out. Make sure that you're focused on getting things done and putting some quality effort in. Let's zip right through more story problems and get to it. So for these first two, number one and number two, you had to write your own story problems and answer them. So for this one to answer it, it's super easy. Seven times five, we know that seven times five is going to be 35, so M equals 35 on that one. Now, if we were gonna write this out as a story problem, we have the equation seven times five. So we're gonna do something five times. That something has got a value of seven. So I often think of loops and groups or items in jars, items in boxes, items in bags, items in some other container. Something in a container is the easiest way to do a multiplication equation. So I might say there were seven bags of M&Ms. Each bag of M&Ms only had five M&Ms in them. How many M&Ms did I get? Or I might say there are seven boxes of cherries. It's a weird thing to put in a box. In each box, there were five cherries. How many cherries were there altogether? Items in boxes, items in bags, items in some kind of containers. Think of containers when you're doing multiplication, folks. Alternatively, when we're looking at division, we're no longer thinking of containers. We're thinking of grouping things up into containers. And how many would be in there? Now on for this one, you had another assignment called more arrays. On more arrays, you needed to tell us how many were in each group or how many groups there were. Think of that when you think of division. So I've got 35 of something, that's my total. It's the whole amount. I'm gonna split that up into groups of five. So I might say that I have 35 M&Ms. 35 M&Ms, I split those 35 M&Ms up into five groups. How many M&Ms were in each group? Or I might say I have 35 M&Ms, I split those up into five boxes. How many M&Ms are in each box? Or if I have 35 M&Ms and I put five into each box, how many boxes could I fill? 35 divided by five is gonna equal N. N is gonna equal seven on that one. Writing story problems. Now for number three, four, five, six, and seven, we're not writing story problems anymore. We are answering story problems. Now as we go through this one, I am going to answer with the quotient. And if you submitted this, you should have submitted these as complete sentences. I'm gonna give you the equations. You should have had it written out in complete sentences. Let's start off with number three. Ms. Rowan had six tables in her classroom and 24 students. She advises students evenly amongst the tables. How many students will sit at each table? Well, you've got 24 and six. We're gonna take 24. We're gonna divide them evenly into six. What is 24 divided by six? I'm not sure, but I know that six times four equals 24. So 24 divided by six has to equal four. Number four says, Teresa has 24 stickers in her book, a total of 24. Each page holds six stickers. How many stickers does her book have? I've got 24. I'm going to divide those equally into six. That's also going to be four. Steve baked 36 cookies. He put four cookies in each bag. How many bags of cookies did he have? 36 divided by four equal nine. Craig gave his sister four boxes of, of new markers. She was happy to get 36 new markers. How many markers were in each box? We're gonna take that largest number first when we're doing division. 36 divided by four equals nine because nine times four equals 36. Ms. Allen was getting ready for a math investigation. Each student needed eight paper clips. She had 32 paper clips. What is 32 divided by eight? That's gonna be four. Eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna do eight a little bit differently because we've zipped right through all these. So what we're gonna do with number eight is we're actually gonna look at the process and how to solve because we should do that eventually for one of them. The math club was going on a field trip. They were driving eight school vans, eight. If there were 32 students in the math club and each van took the same number of students, how many students were in each van? You can do this on a number line. You could have done 
32, and then made jumps backwards of 8. So 32 minus 8. What is 32 minus 8? It's going to be 26. What is 26 minus 8? It's going to be 18. What is 18 minus 8? Well, that's going to be 10. What is 10 minus 8? It's going to be 2. Oh, no. Something went wrong. <laughs> Up my math because I didn't end up at zero, I ended up at two. I'm gonna have to check this again. Where did I go wrong? We started off at 32, we subtracted eight. What is eight less than 32? 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. Well, it is 32 minus 6. Oh, wait a minute. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, six, but I have to subtract eight. 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26, 25, 24. That's where I went wrong. Ooh, I gotta check my work. I did minus six, but it should have been a minus eight jump. Now I'm at 24, minus eight, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. 16 minus 8 gets me down to 8, and 8 minus 8 gets me down to 0. Zero. Because I arrived at 0, I have done it correctly, because I know that 32 divided by 8 should equal an even number, which for us was 1, 2, 3, 4 jumps. So our answer should be 4. You could have also grouped this together. I've got 32 students. I'm going to put them in 8 vans. I'm going to do this one as an array. I'm going to draw 32 dots in eight rows, or in rows of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because I got eight, I stop at eight and I go to my next one. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. I got a four by eight array of 32 all together. I did it groups of eight. I ended up with four groups. Number nine gives you an equation. Each class in the gym gathered four tennis balls. There were 25 students in the class. Then the gym teacher divided the balls evenly into 20 different buckets. How many balls are in each bucket? This was a two-step word problem, everybody. Two. That means there's two equations that come along with it, or one long equation. Which one was it? Well, we got to look back at the story. Each student in the gym gathered four tennis balls. There were 25 students, so if 25 students, each one of them gathered four, we're gonna do four 25 times, so it's gonna be four times 25 to start with, because that's what we started with. I'm gonna put that in parentheses. I can see here, I got four plus 25, four times 25, 20 divided by four, and four times 25. It's either that bottom one or that second one. Let's keep going. Then the gym teacher divided, divided, the balls evenly into 20 different buckets. 20 buckets, they can't make it easy more for you, easier for you than that, folks. It says divided right there. Equals B. Hey, look, it's gotta be that right over here. This one they added. Now, if for this to be added, it would be each student in the class gathered four tennis balls, then 25 students, there are 25 students in each class, then the gym teacher added 25 balls. How many balls were there all together? But we didn't add, we divided. So we are right there. You should have had that one as it. What is four times 25? Well, four times 25 is 100. What's 100 divided by 20? Well, that's gonna be five. B equals five. Now you've got a challenge one. Number 10 was a challenge one. We gotta keep track of a few things. Mr. Gardner gathered $65 from each student going to a music festival. He needed to divide that money evenly to pay a field trip helpers. There was a bus driver, a lunchroom lady, a person running the festival, and a photographer. He had 26 students going to the festival. How much money did he pay each field trip helper? Well, there are four field trip helpers. One, two, three, four. There's the number four. We're gonna wanna remember that. That's super important. But the first thing we're gonna figure out is how much money did he have? Well, he had $6.15 from each student. They were 26 students. So our first equation is 6.5 times 26. Now, to do this, I'm going to do partial product. Now, I could split it up into a 20 and a 6, but I'm going to split it up even smaller than that. I'm going to split this 20 into two 10s and a 6, because 10 plus 10 plus 6 makes 26. I'm going to take each one of these numbers. i got to multiply all them by 6.5. So I'm going to have $6.50. I'm going to do that 10 times. And then I'm going to do $6.50 10 more times. And then I'm going to do $6.50 six 
times. What is six dollars and fifty cents ten times? Well, really, all we do is end up adding a zero whenever we multiply a number by ten. Really, what that is is moving the decimal. So, because I'm multiplying both these by a zero by ten, I'm going to move that decimal one place value. Instead of having six dollars and fifty cents, I'm going to have sixty-five dollars twice. Six point five times ten is sixty-five. How about six dollars and fifty cents six times? Well, I'm going to split this up into two parts. I'm going to split it up into a six and a point five or fifty. Six times six is thirty-six, and what is six times point five? Well, it's three. Why is it three? Well, let's add point five. Six times point five is one half. One half plus 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 one half, plus one half is three because it takes two to make one. Two and three. So what is 36 plus three? It's 39. So I get $65, $65 and 39. That become I'm gonna add all of those together. If I am gonna figure out how much money Mr. Gardner collected for the field trip, I could add 65 plus 65 and then add my 39. I could add them all together in one shot. I could add them a lot of different ways. I'm going to do them in one big shot, algorithmically even. You might have done it differently. I got 5 plus 5 makes 10 plus 9 makes 19. 9 there, 1 there. 6 plus 6 makes 12 plus 1 is 13. 14, 15, 16. 169. Mr. Gardner gathered $169. We're done, right? That's the answer? No, remember that 4? Yeah, Mr. Gardner has to take that $169 and divide it equally amongst four people. Long division is not something we've looked at yet. So what we're doing this is we're going to do this like partial products, except it's called partial quotient. For us to do partial quotient, we're going to split this up into a 160 and a 9. Each one of those is going to have to get divided by that 4. So I got 160 divided by 4, and I'm going to have 9 divided by 4. So 160 divided by 4 is surprisingly easy, because just like when we multiply, we can ignore zeros. When we divide, we can ignore the zero at the end as well. 16 divided by 4 is way easier, because I know that 4 times 4 makes 16, so 16 divided by 4 must also equal 4. Hey, that zero we ignored, let's add it right to the end. I got 40. Now I gotta do 9 divided by 4, and I can't do that, because I got 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I got one guy hanging out all by himself. So if I take nine and I divide it into four equal parts, I've got one, two, three, four parts, and then one left over. I can't split that one up into smaller parts, can I? I sure can because I'm dealing with money. So that one actually equals one dollar. What's one dollar split up into four parts? Think of quarters, everybody. It's 25 cents. So we were able to take 160 and split it up into groups of 40 evenly. We were able to take 9 and split it up into groups of 2 evenly with 25 left over. So I got to take my $40 and my $2.25 and I add them together to get my final answer, $42.25. How much money did each field trip helper get? Each field trip helper got $42 and 25 cents. <laughs>